Good afternoon, YouTube, friends, guests, and subscribers. Um, today, I wanted to finish up a project that I've been working on for the last couple of days, and I thought I'd bring you along with the, for the ride so that you can see what we're doing today. Uh, today, we're replicating um, and finishing off a do-it-yourself mount, um, namely built of wood. It can be used, uh, well, it can be adapted with Unistrut for the, the top part for the panels, but... Um, the way that I'm doing this particular set of panel uh, mounts is going to be with all wood. Uh, so I'm bringing you along the ride, let you kind of see what we've done, uh, give you a couple of uh, items that you'll need to build your own. And uh, obviously, if you guys have comments, I want you to put them inside of the page. But here's where we are. Uh, so far, this uh, four by four post was a 10 foot post. It was cut into four sections. Um, well, actually, two four by fours were cut into sections. This particular one is three feet long. Um, actually, it's four feet long, and it's buried about two feet into the ground, and then it sticks up about a foot and a half. And then, obviously, we have this concrete uh, circle that kind of uh, comes up a little bit so that we can mow and and actually uh, do other things around this without having to worry about damaging the wood. So it has a. Uh, screw bolt uh, sunk in to where it can't be pulled out um, the original intention and design behind that was to be used for using the um, the uh, actuator that lifts the panels up and down as you can see it's screwed down um, my other designs are with bolts I just don't have the bolts with me today um, and it's real easy to take these things out basically countersink in two screws drill your bolt through and, and clamp it down uh, didn't want to waste any time buying those bolts this morning, but um, you can also use one of these long screws. You can cut it down to whatever length you need, and then obviously drive it on both sides. Now, the particular design I have, uh, I'm not going to give you any specific measurements that um, make you think that you'll be able to use it on yours, but all of my panels are basically the same width. These are all 85 watt panels, and the four over there are all 100 watt panels. And together, over there, they give me 400 watts, and these give me... 15 times 4, 340 watts um, from these. And <clears throat> I didn't want to waste those panels having them sitting around, so I decided to put them on their own mount. Now, you can scale this mount up. Uh, you can actually lift it up to as high as, I believe, 10 foot in the sky. It just depends on if you use 2 by 4 or 4 by 4s or if you use 4 by 6s. Um, I just wanted to bring you along with the ride, give you guys a couple ideas. Hopefully, they can help you guys out. All right, so let me show you some of the supplies you'll need to get started. Um, I've already cut my 2x4 to length and started painting it today. Um, I still have to do the other side, but you can see I notched the wood so I can see which side goes up, which side goes down. You'll need one of these 8-foot uh, tubes. Um, I cut mine in half so that I could uh, basically set my concrete. Um, not dig as deep, but uh, basically set my concrete and have something for the the uh, concrete to set in to make it look smooth and circular on the outside design. Um, I used one inch uh, electrical conduit cover. Um, you'll need a uh, service cap, another length of uh, one inch tubing. Um, you have the couplers and then obviously a 90 degree angle uh, so that when it goes underground you have somewhere for it to go. And two other things that's not pictured because I've already used it would be the 4x4 and a hole digger. Now, uh, you'll need concrete. Let me ch just walk you over here. If I were thinking about it, I would have carried it over here. But that's the power of making a video on the fly, I guess. Excuse me. Unlock the car. Cool thing here. Well, I'm got you out here. Got solar. If you see this, that's me. Okay. Um. You also need concrete. Um, what I decided to use was the Professional Quick Crete uh, 5000. It's high strength uh, concrete mix. Um, it gives more of a finished look when the uh, concrete sets versus like a 50 pound or 60 pound bag. By the way, this is an 80 pound bag, but if it gives more of a finished look versus a 50 or 60 pound bag. Um, you don't see as many stones. You get a, a stronger uh, concrete also. And being that this uh, design is... Uh, partially above ground you, you want as strong of a concrete that you can get um, so that if you by accident happen to hit it or someone happens to mow and 
you pull on a wire or something it doesn't just pull your whole, whole thing out of the ground it's pretty strong i've pulled on it i've stood on it i've tried to knock it over it's uh pretty sturdy and i'm appreciative of that because i plan to have it here for as long as i can um <clears throat> other another thing that you'll need is paint i chose red that's just one of our favorite colors here so um you can use reflective paint you can use silver you can use black you can use whatever colors just make sure that if it's in a path where four wheelers and things like that are uh traveling to it that they can see it at night with reflectors or something but like i said i use red and then my panels are obviously silver around the edge they it kind of stands out and besides that it's another complete array right behind it very difficult to hit but for you guys more in the, the more country areas and you're putting them out there um, where you have some clearance for the sky just think about visibility when you're using it now uh just to kind of give you guys some back shots um of the array that you're going to build you're going to sink the uh you can see that the panel is tiltable that's that's the unique part about it that i love but on the back side of this you're going to want to sink in your four by four unit uh ignore these i have these to hold up the battery that's going to hold my uh actuator um or for the mount that's going to hold my actuator battery so that i don't have to worry about running some type of power out here every time i want to move the panels um anyway you can see here this is screwed in and this was just my test phase i mean i'm gonna finish this off with taking it apart and then repainting it but you're gonna have something to connect your panels on top you're gonna have a connector here you got um you're gonna have a bolt in between these three sides about six inches long um and then obviously I'm moving my actuator from that side instead of lifting the panels it's going to pull on the panel so it's going to connect on this side it's just uh there's no real preference it's 300 pound lift i just wanted to um instead of having the mount way down there where it could get damaged um with a weed eater or something i wanted to move it up and then you have your service cap here where your wires are running through um i use uh, I use a 8 gauge wire to combine these two um, from these two 10 gauge wires that come from the solar panels that combines into this box here on each one to go to 8 gauge wire to connect to the other um, panels. My particular array is four 85 watt um, panels on the other one and four 100 watt panels but the important thing to know um, is these over here are all panels made for um, 12 volt batteries. The panels in the background are, are uh, grid type uh, panels. The difference namely being the fact that um, when you have a 12 volt panel, uh, they basically want to get you somewhere around uh, 18 volts. So you'll find that they'll have 36 cells, 36, 36, 36. And when you divide that by two, it gives you, um, well, uh, you divide that by 0.5 or 0.56 volts, whatever the voltage is, and it gives you basically a nominal voltage that you'll have on there. And these particular set of panels are about 80, 88, 85 um, volts um, when when they're in cool weather, but mostly they stay around 60 uh, volts whenever they're pulling power in. Um, the reason I mention that is um, these panels here are also connect connected in four um, sets. So you got one, one, two three four and then you got one two three four and then one two three four the reason i have them hooked up like that over there and i'm able to get away with it is because those particular sets of panels are going to be at 120 volts at max 140 um and these like i said are going to run around 60 volts and then max of 88 um but the reason i mention it is because if you're going to build an array i don't want you to think that every uh uh outback charge controller can um run that much or if you do uh have the ability to do that think about how many cells each uh panel has because that basically tells you whether or not your charge controller can handle it there's also what's known as a vlc on the back of your panels that'll tell you whether or not you can handle it um let's see here they say 20 22.5 vlc times four that's 88 those on there uh say 20 volts so basically i use the highest and that gives me the 88 volts but normally when they pull in through the outback like i said they're about 60 60 volts if not 70 um at its highest point but whenever you're considering those frosty mornings 88 has been the highest that um i've went to and we've had some 
some frosty iced mornings anyway back to the the design since we're waiting on these to dry i guess i'll just kind of show you uh what we've done here on the panel tilt it back up so you can see it a little bit better okay so here when i attached them to the panel so this is going to have a uh, metal bracket here um, i chose to use wood just to hold them onto the side of this until i can get those parts um right here i used washers and uh an inch and a half wood screw used it three times here and another one here um very sturdy design the panels do not move they move with the wood okay and then another set here and then you got another finished block on the other side um it's pretty easy to make i think that the total cost on this project is under if i if i put the two in together it's probably under 20 bucks in wood concrete and supplies um you can get all the stuff that you need at home depot i think the most expensive part would have been the pressure treated four by fours and the concrete bags i think were five dollars a piece i used two bags so um like i said average cost between those two sets of pounds probably about 20 bucks um and that's that's being generous with screws and and bolts and everything else so let me know what you guys uh think of the design let me uh finish this one up hopefully i'll be able to post a picture with this video of the final look um but anyway if you uh like what you see hit that thumbs up if you'd like to see more let me know in the comment section uh, again thank you for watching my video have a great day